for me, it's now I'm trying to embrace the fact that it's just the journey that I'm enjoying and that it's just bringing me closer to a physique that I always dreamed of, you know, and that I could never have. Wits and Weights community, welcome to another episode of the Wits and Weights podcast. Today, I am thrilled to sit down with Isis Alvarado, a longtime member of the Wits and Weights community and a fitness and health enthusiast with a 15-year journey marked by personal struggles and triumphs, which is exactly what we're going to talk about today. Isis isn't just a fitness enthusiast. She's a warrior. She's battled and triumphed over the all-too-common demons of yo-yo dieting and negative body image. Her journey began in a family where weight struggles were the norm, leading her to her first diet at the age of 10. This early challenge set the stage for a life-altering journey through the highs and lows of self-identity, health, and well-being. But here's where the usual trajectory was turned on its head, because as an adult, Isis broke free from the chains of restrictive eating, discovering the world of strength training and evidence-based nutrition. This wasn't just a physical transformation, though. It was mental and emotional. And her story is about the power of resilience, the importance of having solid information rather than misinformation, and the transformative impact of a balanced and sustainable approach to fitness and nutrition. In our conversation today, you're not just going to hear another transformation story. You're going to learn the real tangible strategies that Isis used to overhaul her relationship with food and her body. You'll discover how strength training can be a gateway to not just a better physique, but a better mindset. And most importantly, you'll find out how to apply these lessons in your own life, breaking free from the myths and misconceptions that hold so many back in their fitness journeys. Isis, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me here. I'm very happy to be here. Yeah, and I'm so excited to have you on because you've, you've got an incredible story to tell. You've also been very engaged with our community and have a very bright, positive spirit, which is, appeals to me for sure, and I'm sure our listeners. So let's go way back in the time machine to your childhood because that's where that's your early self-identity was shaped, right? Yeah. You told me that you, quote, came from a family where most were overweight. And even in my home where we would eat healthy homemade food all the time, my mom was overweight and I considered myself overweight too, even though I probably wasn't. So can you share what it was like growing up in an environment where, you know, weight struggles were prevalent and that how that shaped your early perceptions of health and body image? Well, yeah, ever since I can remember, I remember hearing my mom and my aunts talking about diets, about that diet that made them lose like 10 kilos each, each with that doctor, you know, like, so it was like kind of romanticizing this uh, diet culture, losing weight. And they would see it as, you know, like this, for example, this diet that it was the Atkins diet, something like the keto mm -hmm. diet or something. So they, they would always talk about it, about how successful it was. They lost 10 kilos, but they would never say that actually they regained more than that way. So it was not yeah. successful. <laughs> So they were caught up in this vortex of dieting, losing weight, and then gain it all again. So I grew up hearing this. And when I was about 10, I did my first diet with the full support of my family, of course. And I was praised for losing weight. And even mm. I remember yeah. doing one diet when I was like maybe 11 years old, not even 12. Uh, which was almost not eating. It was called um, the cabbage soup diet. So oh, the first man. day, you, yeah, yeah. yeah, you were supposed to lose like four or five kilos in a week because you weren't eating anything. It was just soup. So you, we were surviving on 500 calories a day or something. Of course. So I did that diet for three days. <laughs> for yeah, three and days. then you gave up right away, right? <laughs> yeah. So all my life, it, that was my mindset. You know, like you need to diet to lose weight. But at the same time, it was normal to never be successful, like to always lose diet and like lose weight and then gain it back again, because it was not yeah. seen as as a lifestyle, you know, a sustainable lifestyle, but as something you had to, you know, a goal to reach. And then what happens next? We don't care. You just lose the weight and hopefully pray that it will stay out of your body. But that would never yeah. happen. I mean, your story is so relatable to probably everybody, everybody listening to this, myself included, have been somewhere in our past where we lost weight, gained it back, lost it, gained it back. And just the very idea of what it means to lose weight. First of all, losing weight being the goal, like why is that the goal? We just have been trained to be to that that's the goal for some reason, even though we're never happy when we do that. Secondly, yeah. how we lose weight and, and then it never 
we can never maintain it. So it's like this on off switch. And then the kind of, um, I, I got a little sense of disgust almost when you said you, you did a diet at the age of 10, because that, mm. I don't know how common that is for listeners, but I know women especially have a lot of struggles in, in their childhood with an attention on weight from their parents. What, it, what if, what if, Reflect on that now, knowing that that happened. Like, do you know a lot of people who've been through a similar situation where they were officially dieting at the at that young age? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I come from a country where you know, like the beauty standards are very unattainable. I come from Venezuela, you know. So, like, even the people, the like women who compete on these miss these beauty pageants, they they already look amazing and they make them lose more weight and do surgeries and all. So. There is this, uh, this idea of beauty that is unattainable. So yes, like with all my girlfriends, we always talk about diet, even at this age. And at that time, it was pretty much normal. Like, you know, like if you say to your parents, I want to lose weight, I want to go on a diet, they are like happy for you. Like, why not? That's, that's mm -hmm. what they thought was good, you know? So like reflecting on that, it's, it's actually for me, like the biggest damage that it did for me was the toxic relationship with food that I started developing from that age, because I would see food as something that would make me be fat, you know? Got so it. I yeah. started creating that, that mindset that you need to eat as little as possible, do as much as exercise as possible in order to look a certain way until I made that decision that I'm not going to diet anymore. I'm going to work out because I want to be healthy. I want to live a long life, but I'm not going to restrict myself anymore. So I'll be, you know, fluffy forever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I hear you. Um, that, and you're right. Just the very image of certain foods like bread or potatoes in some people's yeah. minds, it's like that equals fat. And I, you know, I have clients all the time where I say, well, have you eaten potatoes? Like that's a great option for satiety during fat loss. And like, yeah. well, that's carbs and I'm in fat loss. And you're saying to eat potatoes, like we just have these <laughs> links yeah. to, to food. So, all right. So then let's fast forward a little bit um, because then in your teenage and college years, you said that's when you started this yo-yo dieting, right? This you lose weight, regain weight, you lose weight, regain weight. And you said that you believed being fat was in your genes. And we mean like genetics, right? And the only way to keep away from that was through a lot of food restriction and exercise. A lot of listeners definitely believe, or I'm sure they think that their genetics are sort of hardwired and they're everything and they're restricting food and they're doing lots of exercise, especially cardio. So tell us about your life at that time. Well, I did believe it was in my genes because all my aunts were, you know, overweight, even my mm -hmm. mom. And as I said, my family, in my family, we eat very healthy. We rarely eat out, etc. But then I realized, you know, my mom was, you know, like all the time snacking and stuff. And that adds up, you know, so she was actually overeating. <laughs> it was not on the genes. Then at some point, I started to think that I damaged my metabolism forever. And that, that was irreversible. I did so yeah. many diets that now it's me who I broke it. <laughs> but oh, now, actually, yeah. yeah. Hold, hold now on, hold on. You said, hold on. You yeah. said something very interesting about your mom, how you thought, so you saw her as overweight, but you thought she was dieting, but she was really just sneaking the food. And so she was just over consuming food. I think that's important, right? Like we all, yes. we all lie to ourselves in, in that way many, many times, but we just don't know how much we're eating. Yeah. Exactly. And it's something that I discovered after I started tracking food that, you know, something that seems like a harmless little snack. It's actually 500, 600 calories. And if you're already eating your, you know, the calories that your body should be eating with your three meals, then actually that's, that's a lot. You know, like if you do it two, three times a week, which is very often if, you know, some people they snack like all the time and some people they never do. Like my dad, he will never snack. Mm -hmm. But my mom, yeah, she's in the kitchen and she's always, you know, like, eating here and there so of course now that i realize it's mm -hmm. like yeah i mean she was overweight because she was eating more calories than what she was burning mm -hmm. it's not that you know and, and then that, and then that lead and then that leads to well now i'm overweight now i have to go on a diet right and i have to just like cut all this weight as fast as possible to get back to some magic number yes exactly yeah. and that made me believe that it wasn't possible for me to I be see. lean because it was in my genes. I, I would always say that even, you know, eating, I was getting fat from air, you know. But the, the truth is that I was, I was restricting myself most of my life, you know, like 
on and off because when you restrict yourself, then you have periods in which you unrestrict yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you become too free. And, you know, the, the thing is that I was just making my metabolism slower. And at that time, and that's something I started also to understand with, with macro factor and seeing your, mm -hmm. your expenditure going up and down. And I realized, of course, I was just, my body is just a perfectly good functioning body that was adapting to the little mm -hmm. calories I was given. And I should actually be thankful for that <laughs> because my body was very good to adapt to that. And, you know, I was not just losing all the way. My body was just adapting. Like, are you eating less? Now you function with less. So, yeah. yeah. And that's another great point for, for folks listening is that you could be, even if you're not losing weight, you could be in this perpetual low energy state where you're eating less than your body needs, but not so little that you're going to lose much weight. And now you're just exactly. underfed, your metabolism's lower, and you think that you have to eat way less calories than you do for losing weight or whatever it is. So yeah, all these revelations are important, but let, let, let's continue the let's continue getting you close to the present because I wanna I wanna understand the experiences you went through because in early adulthood you said that you promised yourself you were never gonna diet again because you love food and the restrictions that you thought you needed to be lean were just too much to happily handle. And you started to exercise intensely and regularly and eat quote unquote, super healthy, right? Lots of veggies, restricting carbs, having a huge list of foods you love, but shouldn't eat because they make you fat. And you thought you could never be lean because it would take too much effort and you couldn't sustain it. So again, clean eating, cutting out carbs, thinking of foods as good and bad, just uh, this is your relationship with food at the time, right? Still yeah. not not the healthiest. <laughs> no, not, not healthy at all. <laughs> it was very unhealthy, actually, not only for my body, but also mostly for my mind, you know? Yeah. Like you're always, it's not just, it's not only that you end up binging on food more often than not. It's also the impact of those binges in your emotions, you know, like in your, in your, in your mind you know you feel like you're a failure you feel like you're never gonna be able to do it you know why i can't control myself i will always be like but mm -hmm. why what's going on like i do very well in other almost all areas in life right and why i'm such a mess with food yeah, <laughs> yeah and yeah falling off quote unquote falling off the wagon all the time right or whatever exactly. labels we use yeah 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 it made me feel like out of control, which I never felt in any other areas in my yeah. life. It made me feel so out of control, so powerless, so frustrated, you know? So it was all this emotion that it was creating, not only like the extra calories that I was consuming because my body was trying to compensate, but right. all this chaos in my mind. Chaos in your mind. And what, what did the exercise look like then? You said you were exercising intensely. This is before you got into lifting. What did it look like? Yeah, yeah. well, I was at the end, what I stuck to heat, doing 30, 40, 50 minutes of heat, but I went through almost everything I could find. You know, I was just, I once did this one called Insanity. Probably you heard about it. Oh, yeah, sure. It was awful. It was awful. Is that, P, is that P90? Was that Beachbody? One of those programs? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was yeah. super intense for like an hour already. The warm up was like leaving me exhausted and I'm not a lazy person. <laughs> like, what am I doing to myself? So, yeah. At the Plus, end, it I wasn't was, fun, was it? It probably wasn't fun either. Was, no, no. Yeah, I yeah. was not enjoying it. I was, yeah. and I actually, I ended up like sticking to heat for the longest because it was short intervals of time. So mm -hmm. I will, you know, in my mind, it would be just 30 seconds. You can do 30 seconds. Come on, right, 30 right. Seconds, nothing. So it would feel easier. It would feel more manageable, you know, but I never really enjoy it. I yeah. always did it and I felt very well afterwards and I could see that, you know, it would help my body somehow. I, I never looked like really fit, but I also didn't look unfit. So it was like, <laughs> <laughs> I says I can, I mean, doing CrossFit for eight years, I can relate to that. We're like, cause people have asked me that, well, were you in shape? And I said, well, conditioning was there. Like you had pretty good heart health probably. Yeah. And, and it, you burned a lot of calories kind of, but your body probably compensated a little bit as well, but it's, it's because you're just working so much and, and putting all this intense work in. 
and we're not saying hits bad, right? Like even as a lifter, a few hit sessions can, can be a great thing if you, especially if you can make them enjoyable, but that was your only mode of exercise, which sounds like torture. Yeah, it was. <laughs> okay. So now let's get to the fun stuff. We come to it like about a year and a half ago, you started lifting, right? Is that about right? A yeah, year and a half ago? about a year, less than a year and a half. A year Less and a year. Months. Okay. Yeah. And, and you said that there was this significant shift in your approach to health and fitness now as an adult, a year and a, less than a year and a half ago. What was the catalyst? What was the thing that led you to break away from the cycle of the eating stuff, you know, restrictive eating and yo-yo dieting, but also the training? So first it started with the training. I was doing heat at home. I had bought some, you know, after the pandemic, I ended up buying a few things here and there. Mm-hmm. And then I... I met this friend who was a personal trainer and she had been training all her life and she told me let's work out together a couple of days a week and I was happy too because I never had friends who wanted to work out with me. Cool. On the contrary, you know, like I had to beg them and they would be like, no. So I started working out with her at the gym and we were weightlifting because that's what she was doing and I started, I realized I actually liked it way more than any other kind of exercise. I actually liked it you know, for real, like it. So I started weightlifting with her, but we were just, uh, we didn't follow any strategy. We were just okay. there. And she's like, we're just conditioning, you know, like in a few months, we'll start with the strategy. But I think she really, she didn't want to get there because she's been doing that all her life and now she's on her lazy years. Oh, so she's just yeah. maintaining. So it was more of exercise, yeah. not training. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Actually, she was like so eager to, for me to, join her because she was not being able to bring her set to the gym okay, I without see. an extra motivation. <laughs> so I started and I liked it. So I started to read more about weightlifting. I, you know, that's when I discovered your podcast and all. And I start, I started to realize that, okay, first I need a strategy. I cannot just go there and just do all the machines. I can actually, I was doing more than what I'm doing now. I was doing seven, eight exercises, you know, like each time and Mm -hmm. like pushing very hard, but at the same time, not tracking anything. So it was depending on how I was feeling that day. So I started to realize, okay, I need a strategy. Then also I became again, open-minded to taking care of my nutrition in with an objective in mind, with that strategy as well. You know, I Mm -hmm. had counted calories before here and there, but I didn't really see I mean, I didn't know how many calories I had to eat. You do these calculations online, but they don't work for you. I mean, right. the calculations right. I did online were not correct after, you know, using Macrofactor for a while. So I didn't really see results. So eventually I matched these two together. I said, now I'm going to try it. I started studying, listening to your podcast from the beginning, taking notes and I started doing progressive overload. I designed, but I didn't design. I took it from different sources, my workouts, I start. I, I bought Macrofactor, I started to follow, you know, the calories they told me. And in like maybe four months, I've seen more change than I have ever seen before in my life. And the effort has been like a fraction of what I usually, what I usually have to do to see any kind of change in my body. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I'm beaming right now, Isis. Okay. I want, I have to interject. I'm beaming because this is like what I wish everyone who listened to this show would do is exactly what you're doing is you took action and you started, I mean, you took notes, which I love. You binged the show and hopefully got a few nuggets, which makes, makes me really very, very proud. And I, I still am surprised when I hear people say that, but believe it or not, I still am very surprised when people are like, yeah, I listened to your show and it actually helped change my life. I, that, that makes me feel great. But for you, to say that it, it helped you get more control and do it in a way that felt like you weren't sacrificing anymore and you're able to get progress. Like that's what, that's what we want. That's what people want out of this journey for it to be a fun thing, for it to be a productive thing that doesn't require all this, you know, guts and sweat and discipline and willpower. So I, I just congratulate you on like taking that action. You made it happen for yourself, but you took the information. So, so thank you. And, and I want to applaud you for that. Thank you. I know I wanted to say also to tell you how grateful I am with everything that you share. Like you are very generous with your time and with the information, also getting people together. I usually don't belong to any online communities. And if I do, I'm just there like looking from the distance. I don't (laughs) participate, you know, and 
you have created a space in which I feel also inspired and motivated to share my experiences with other people, you know, like I to have a some kind of virtual long distance connection with other people who are going through the same journey as we all are. That's that's beautiful, Isis. And I, I've I've heard that from a lot of people and I agree, like in the sense that I'm also in a lot of Facebook groups and some of them are not very active or it's just a different feel. It's a different culture. And having come from like the world of CrossFit, I was very much missing the community aspect of that because I work out from home. But also with the podcast, knowing that people would reach out and say, hey, I listened to this and it helped me out. And I'm like, well, how can we get more and more people who do that, who listen to the show to kind of interact with each other? Because every day we see people come in who are where you were like two years ago or five years ago. They come in and you can see their questions are like very basic questions that I'm always surprised that they don't know the answer to, but we've all been there. Yeah. <laughs> and so our community just said, Hey, and they dive in with a very positive attitude. You know, you'll chime in and, and uh, somebody who's, you know, an expert lifter will chime in or whatever the answer is to, to improve all of these things. So yeah, I'm glad you said that. And I want to go back to you, Isis, with the, um, the recent transformation you said, because it's, you said you had all this chaos in your mind before, right? Yeah. What, what is your mental state now? Like, how does it change and, and what specific strategies allowed that to change? Well, um, I, you know, and I have self-diagnosed diagnosed myself with that I have a toxic relationship with food mm -hmm. and that I am an, an emotional eater, et cetera, et cetera. But then also I realized that my, the biggest trigger for me was my food restriction. I never was an emotional eater as in, you know, I was going through some traumas or bullying or whatever and eating. No, my all my relationship with food started, like the toxicity of it started by restricting the food, by restricting mm -hmm. the, the, the quantity and by restricting the diversity of food I could eat and by relating eating certain food to being fat, which is something I never wanted to be. You know, right. so now that I'm eating more, like I feel always, I never feel hungry that I'm eating a lot of carbs and that I'm eating probably more protein that I never, I had never eaten before. It's uh, the, the desire to binge is almost never there. That for once. And for like the other thing is that I also wanted to thank you for is you talk so much about the uh, sustainability that it finally made a way inside of my mind. Mm -hmm. And for example, when I would binge, uh, I would just try to compensate in the next two, three days to eat at le as little as possible to balance that out, right? Mm -hmm. So at some point, I, you know, I realized that this is not sustainable. You know, like one day you just, fall off the wagon, which happens to absolutely everyone, even with people who are not, who don't have any, you know, unhealthy relationship with food. You, you'll hear them talk about how they finish the bag of Doritos or whatever, sure. you yep. know, and you, I'm here punishing myself because I did that instead of just, it's okay. I ate a thousand calories extra. So what, you know, yep. like maybe if I'm trying to lose weight, it's just gonna, you know, it's gonna delay. Slow you down something. a tiny bit, yeah. And yeah. there is no end goal anymore, you know? Like, it's just, it's this is just a process for me. So it's not like before when with this diet mentality, I want to lose 10 kilos and that was the end goal, you know? Now it's like, I'm just trying to make myself stronger and hopefully that would also shed the, the extra fat and, you know, just, it's more like a vague goal. Like the goal is actually in the process. Yes. To follow this process in a way that is sustainable for my body and for my mind. So this, uh, this contact, constant mentioning of sustainability also shifted something in my relationship with food, in my binges, you know? Like now if I do, which is very like rare, it's just an isolated event. Before I would binge and then I would try to restrict myself in the next two, three days to compensate the calories. So then I would end up binging again one day or two days later. So it would be always like three, four binges in a week mm. instead of just one. Just take it, you know, because also when you 
see it as you know black and white this is bad i did something wrong it also brings you know the guilt the feeling of not being enough or like what's wrong with me so that makes you self-sabotage again so it's all you know like all this process has also helped me a lot mentally and emotionally in my relationship with food i'm starting to see things with a completely different filter and it's it. much yeah. easier i don't like now when i the last time i binge it was the day that my period came i just <laughs> like ate a bunch of stuff i was like what just happened <laughs> why <laughs> And then my period came. I was like, ah, okay, exactly. Now I get it. You know, so it's uh, I don't, and I don't feel bad about it. It's like, okay, whatever. You know, like I just life goes on. I'm not gonna change anything. Awesome. Absolutely anything. Isis, you have such a level of self awareness, and you're right that like the buzzwords we use, like sustainability, I say it all the time, and I think it can be it can be overused when you don't explain what that means. And I think you did a really great job explaining different facets of what we mean by sustainability. So what you basically said was overall that I heard is it's part of your life. It's part of your process. You don't think of it as dieting or not dieting. And you talked about the binge restrict cycle. You can't binge on a regular basis if you're not also restricting on a regular basis to, exactly. to have that cycle. So if you're simply accepting that you can enjoy the food you like, incorporate them, plan for them. Obviously, we don't want to eat to excess or do anything in excess. We don't want to do that, but your body won't feel great when you do that anyway. So incorporate the things you love. Like you said, you're not, you're hardly ever hungry, right? And maybe you still get go, go off a little bit here and there because of hormones, because of your period, but it doesn't matter. You, you accept it, it's reality, and you move to the next day. You also said that the goal is in the process. I love that quote. You said, it's just a process. The goal is in the process. And every day we can have goals, right? Whether it's training or, you know, hitting our macros or making sure that we are satisfied or non-fitness related goals as well. I, I agree. That's how we make things sustainable is just going after those on a regular basis and then pushing the comfort zone a little bit on the areas where we want to improve. Last thing you said was the no guilt from the black and white mentality. So again, same philosophy, same principle of just do things in moderation, right? Do things in a way that that you can live with sustainably so you don't have that dieting mentality. And then finally, you mentioned getting stronger, which we all love here because if you have a goal to be athletic or strong or you know build muscle, it, it allows the food to support that. And then you're yeah. never really restricting. And of course, you can go through a fat loss phase. You know, We talk about that all the time. Sometimes you do have to do a, a, a level of calorie restriction with it for a fat loss phase, but you're still not restricting the types of foods you eat. So thank you for kind of laying the whole masterclass out of sustain <laughs> sustainability, uh, <laughs> Isis. So yeah, that was just a lot of commentary. So let me ask you another question yeah. because strength training was critical and it still is critical to your transformation. No more uh, P90 intensity workouts, right? No or, way. No way again. <laughs> so, no. so how is, is it, tell us about your training. What does it feel like? How has it transformed your, your physique and your mind? So it's, it, Cause it's okay to want to have like a great looking body, you know, and I, I think you oh, do, sure. but in a healthy way. So tell us about all that. So, well, as I said, I really enjoy my, my trainings. I really love them. I always look forward to going to the gym and I, it, I didn't realize how much of an impact it has in my mindset until I had to stop for a couple of months. And the moment, and I was also going through some difficult times that were making me feel a little down. And the moment I went back to the gym, I did that first training after two months, I felt so empowered. You know, before I was feeling like I was letting all these issues not bring me down, but I was feeling like a little, like a bit, like a victim right i just did that and i don't know what it did in my brain i felt like i feel normal again you know like i feel like myself again so definitely that i enjoy that i enjoy like while i'm training i like the fact that it's for me it's like a meditation because i have to focus on one single thought which is like you can do 10 reps or whatever how many reps i can do it like you can do it. So mm -hmm. if my mind goes somewhere for a mic, mic, like for a millisecond, then I like, oh, my strength goes. <laughs> so if I think about like whatever, you know, like I have to boom, it goes. So it's a good mental exercise for me. And uh, yeah, I, I really, I'm planning my workouts now. 
I plan, you know, the way that I'm going to do, the reps that I'm going to do. It's, uh, I don't know, more or less. I don't know if that answers your question. It does. No, it, it appeals to me in the whole structure behind it, because what you're saying is that, you know, just, just so people are listening who may not be as familiar, we are talking about training where you have a plan, you have sets, reps, movements, yes. loads, all planned out, and then you're yeah. executing on that. And there's a sense of empowerment and control. But I like that you you could compare what it was like to not train for a while after having trained and then come back and realize, whoa, like I really want this in my life because yeah. it's just mentally invigorating and you feel powerful and strong. And I, I, ha I've seen, I have never seen anyone who didn't feel that way to some extent about strength training. Now that's different from exercise and like randomly working out and all this high rep stuff and cardio. That's different than what you're talking about. You said this is like a form of mindfulness. It's a process. You focus like there's a common theme here. So you definitely answered the question. I want to inspire people that training can be more. It's more than just building muscle and getting strong. It's a lot of other things. Yeah. yeah. And actually, like if you're lucky enough to do it, like to do it with a friend, which I was doing before. Hopefully I go back to doing it in a few months with my friend. It's uh, it's also time for socializing. I really enjoy that. It was like our our friend time, you know, we were in between sets. So we just talk, you know, catch up on things, plan the weekend or whatever. So it's, uh, it's uh, I like it. And, you know, like you have a lot of time for yourself. Now that I'm going alone, it's like, a lot of me time. Okay, I have mm. to do some research. I have to do some online shopping in between sets, you know, three, four minutes. <laughs> like, <laughs> that, that's so true. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I love it. I love it. There is, there is nothing I don't like about strength training. And yeah, it's, it empowers me as well. And for sure, in my physique, I've never seen such a change in my life. Mm. Even when I have lost like 20 pounds with a diet or something, I've never seen the change because Actually, when you're just losing weight without strength training, your body is just becoming smaller, but very slowly, right? So you don't mm -hmm. see it in the you don't see it in the mirror. Maybe when you see a picture of how you were before, you're like, "Oh my God, did I look like that?" You know, like you realize you have changed. But with strength training now, well, following of course, following a plan, a strategy, mm -hmm. in like three four months, like now when I'm at the gym looking at you know doing exer like exercising, like doing something and looking at myself in the mirror, I don't recognize my body. Like yeah. wow, is that me? It's <laughs> awesome. All those muscles, you know, with that definition. So yeah, you see a change with strength training because it's like you are not only losing fat, you're building muscles, so you are like becoming a little smaller, which is not very noticeable maybe but the muscle it's not pops out yeah yeah so you it's actually very motivating i mean not that i need it to go to the gym because i'm lucky enough to as i said to really love everything about it but i yeah. guess if you are not you know so much into it like yeah no it's true it's i mean like I, yeah, I agree. And I mean, I can see your delts and shoulders right here popping, you know, like on the screen. I mean, it's fun to have that physique even even when you gain some weight. Hi, my name is Lisa and I'd like to give a big shout out to my nutrition coach, Philip Pate. With his coaching, I have lost 17 pounds. He helped me identify the reason that I wanted to lose weight. And it's very simple, longevity. I want to be healthy, active and independent until the day I die. He introduced me to this wonderful little app called Macro Factor. I got that part of my nutrition figured out. Along with that is the movement part of nutrition. There's a plan to it and he really helped me with that. The other thing he helped me with was knowing that I need to get a lot of steps in. So the more steps you have, the higher your expenditure is and the easier it is to lose weight. When it's presented to you like he presents it, it makes even more sense. And the other thing that he had was a hunger guide and that really helped me. So thank you, Philip. So like, I wanted to ask you about that. Have you gone through a dedicated gaining phase where you actually gained a little fat as well? And, and what was that like? Or have you not done that yet? I'm starting. You so started. I, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Remember, I come from this mentality that putting on weight is bad. Mm -hmm. So this has been like a challenge for me. I just, I was in a cut for like four months and I decided, okay, I think I'm ready to go into maintenance, which I'm, I'm now in maintenance, a little above maintenance. And I'm still like, I mean, I'm very happy with all that I eat. That's very mm -hmm. exciting. But I'm still, you know, like mentally getting there to go into the 
dating phase. I mean, it's going to be scary for me, yeah. but I trust the process now 100%. Good. Yeah, no. And I recently did that episode, right? Why I'm getting fluffy yeah. before I get jacked. So hopefully yeah. that helps if, if anybody That's wants the one to. Who, who, yeah. that, the one that inspired me to say, okay, it's time. Let's go. It's like yeah. already for months in losing weight, it's just going to slow down my metabolism. And, you know, I already look lean enough, you know, before maybe when I started, it was like very hard for me, even though it's recommended also like to start. But my mind is still like, you know, reluctant to like if I see myself fluffy in the mirror to Mm -hmm. eat above my maintenance calories. But now it's like, okay, enough. You're looking already, you know, fit enough. It's time to go into into a gaining phase, which is what I'm doing. Like I've been like two weeks in at maintenance. so. I'm going to stay two more weeks and then I'm going to increase a little bit more considerably the calories. So I Okay, can... cool. Yeah. And it's, if it's your first gaining phase ever, you're probably going to go go after something like 0.2% a week or something like that. Maybe maybe a couple pounds a month gain is what we're yes. looking at. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah. It's like a couple of pounds a month. That will be something I'm comfortable with. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, you know, figure if you did that for six months, that's anywhere from six to 12 pounds, but you're going to gain, you know, six pounds of muscle or something like that, which is incredible, incredible amount of muscle that you're going to gain. And and what I'll say is like, when you're at that phase where you, you're, you're kind of maybe not beginner anymore, but you're getting into intermediate phase now, you still have the chance of some body recomp along the way where, you know, you may gain more muscle than you think you may not. And it's, it's embracing the things that, you can control and that are a measure of your success in that phase, which is not leanness. It's, Mm -hmm. it's your lifts, right? It's your muscle. Even when you want to look in the mirror, it's like focusing on your biceps and your shoulders and things that can be defined even while you're gaining weight and not focusing so much on your belly or or other spots that may gain a little more fat. It's, you know, part of the process. (laughs) Yeah. I'm still hoping that I can, you know, even if I go into a slight surplus, I will still keep losing weight. (laughs) Building muscle. Uh, yeah, you mean losing fat while while gaining muscle? Yeah, right? losing, yeah, losing yeah, fat and yeah. gaining muscle because now I still can, you know, my even though I started like lifting like a year and a bit ago, I actually started lifting with a strategy four months ago, or mm-hmm, mm-hmm. four months ago. So I'm still a beginner. So I still I can gain a lot of muscle hopefully. <laughs> You definitely can. You definitely can. What are your thoughts, though, on if you do start to gain some fat? So, for example, are you, are you going to take body measurements like your waist circumference, biceps, things like that, so that you know whether it's muscle or fat? Well, now I'm trying to embrace the fact that, you know, it's it's a journey and mm-hmm. doesn't matter the end. You know, like, you know, we all want this end, this ideal body, like mm-hmm. focus on that. For me, it's now I'm trying to embrace the fact that it's just a journey that I'm enjoying and that it's just bringing me closer to a physique that I always dreamed of, you know, and that I could never have. So, um, of course, it's going to, as I say, I have a lot of resistance to, to go into even maintenance. I was like, you know, especially because it's so easy that it's like I feel I could do, I could continue on a cut for months on end because it didn't feel difficult for me right compared to everything you know all i have done in my life before that so it's um it's uh, emotionally challenge challenging for sure but i'm willing to trust the process because it has worked so far for sure i I can't wait to see your gains and see you get super strong during that phase exactly if they all say it (laughs) they must be right (laughs) you know yeah, it's and it's funny because you say that it's going to be its own challenge, right? Because people always think of dieting and cutting and restricting as as a challenge, so to speak, in the dieting mentality. But when you are gaining weight to gain muscle, it has its own challenges of doing that from a nutrition intake and carbs and performance perspective, which it's kind of fun, right? Because it's the other problem of like, I got to eat enough. <laughs> yeah. and, and you may be, and you haven't experienced that yet, it sounds like, but when you do- that would be nice for me. It'll be I another, yeah, it'll be nice. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I would love it. <laughs> yeah. Give me more calories. I <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and it has its own, it'll teach you a lot of things as, as far as like, you'll, you'll learn about yourself even more about, you know, the, the meal timing and, and carbs and uh, stuff like that. And, and if you start to fall behind, Macrofactor will let you know, right? Because you'll start to, yeah. to flatline. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah. keep keep us up to date in the community as you do that, yeah, you know, yeah. post some screenshots and stuff. Cause we'd love to see that. 
So, all right. I wanted to ask about information and misinformation because one of the things you mentioned was it you know, took all those years before you finally found like this podcast and probably some others like it that you listen to now. How do people navigate through that today, knowing that there's so much junk on social media? There's just so many, the things that get all the attention are usually the extreme fringe ideas, or they're like the 1% of like cold baths and red light therapy and like all this stuff that just doesn't matter versus the basics. Yeah. How do people navigate through all that? How do you do it? I don't know. Listen, for a long time, I thought there was it wasn't easy. I thought it's, it's not. It can't be easy. Okay. So this is something that you know, like, actually goes against a lot of what I believed. You know that mm. I was not gonna be hungry, and I that I was gonna work out only four days a week. You know, for a very short intervals of time. So it's a uh, you don't really believe. I didn't really believe it could work until I decided to give it a try, and. I think, you know, I still have many friends from my childhood, from my college years, who are still struggling, like, with weight issues, and they are, like, barely eating, exercising a lot, and even sometimes I try to tell them, it seems like they are not ready to listen. So I guess Mm. when you are ready, the information will find you, and you will be open to receive it, because... Even my friends can see that it's working for me. They just don't, they, they want to go on one hour run, eat very little, etc. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I mean, I guess it's not about the information. It's about you being ready being for that ready. information. Yeah. Oh, that's so, so good. Just, yeah. All the information is there. And maybe this information passed through my eyes a while ago and I didn't listen because mm. in my mind, my mindset at that time was still thinking that nah, that's not possible. How can it be, you know, like eating that much, just working out that little. Yeah. Oh, that, you know, I, I just thought of something when you said that, because for years I did low carb diets and anytime I would see anything that said anything to the contrary, like, no, low carb diets are not necessary. Carbs are good for performance. I would just, my confirmation bias or whatever bias I had was like, no, 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 that can't be right. Like, and so I would ignore anything related to that, which would have led me down this to this world of evidence-based fitness, right? My first question to you is, have you shared this podcast with them? Uh, I have shared with one friend. <laughs> With share, share it share yeah. the podcast with everybody just, should, yeah. just very pa- passively say hey yeah, you know, yeah. there's a podcast i really love not everybody listens to podcasts but like hey this is my favorite podcast send it to them um, yeah, a shameless I plug should. on my part but honestly if it helped you hopefully it could help them no right? for sure uh, at the end that's what yeah. we all want you know yeah. like to help each other to support each other you know to share what has worked for us but yeah, yeah i mean there is they, i was also doing keto low carb for so long Mm-hmm. And also because I realized that nutrition, it's like, and you know, like many things in life, it's like a religion, you know? Yes. So it's like get, a religion. You know, yeah, there yeah. is not one, univer- one universal truth, even among professionals. Mm-hmm. So people, you get biased with what you believe in. So it's not until you are ready. That's why I say you have to be ready to break free from your religion and open your mind to something completely different you know, yes. and to actually like listen to it. So yeah, it's like, like being right saved on. from a cult. <laughs> it's like exactly. being, uh, being rescued from a cult. Not everybody's ready for it. Um, exactly. You cannot force people out of their cult. You have to wait for them to be like, I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> like, help me now. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I guess the best we, the best we can do is like love and support people who are in our lives, even if they're maybe making the choices we don't think are best for them and, yeah. and, and, and gently encourage them and provide support. And maybe they'll be, when they're ready, you know, it'll be there for them. So that's a, it's a good approach. Plus the idea of, um, of it being a religion implies that, like you said, a universal truth. If, if you are listening to this and you have if you have beliefs like that right now and you're listening to Isis's story and you can relate to everything she said, you're like, huh, may- maybe I should question some of that. I would go back to your concept of sustainability. To me, sustainability is like a principle rather than a dogma, right? Rather than like, if you have sustainability, it means you can eat in a way for you forever. And therefore, there's no one right way to eat. It's the way that is for you. So exactly. kind of kind of embrace that idea rather than a specific, you know, these are the right foods. All right. Exactly. We, it's what works yeah. for you because also 
like I really enjoy weightlifting, but I can see why for some people they would never enjoy it. You know, they would never get into it. It's just a different way of, you know, like working out. So some is that true though? Is that true? I just, hold on, hold on. I want to challenge that because I have a lot of conversations with this on other podcasts about that, where they'll say, well, what do you say to people who just don't like weightlifting? And, and I'll say, well, are they doing it the way that I would do it? And if you start like getting stronger, because you're using a training plan and progressive overlight. Well, I've never met anybody who doesn't start to like the training then, but exactly. that's my opinion. What, what, what do you think? guys? That's my opinion yeah. too, but yeah. some people, they wouldn't, they wouldn't even want to try or they, they wouldn't, wouldn't try. try. Okay. They wouldn't want to try in long enough to yeah. get to like it. Because True. like everything, you cannot like something that like, there is no love at first sight with your workout True. routine. True. You and it's hard. It it's hard, right? Yeah. yeah. Some people yeah. just, they are very resistant to it. Mm especially women, but now I'm more, I see more and more women who are into weightlifting, you know, like I see much more than before, you know? So yeah, I guess, I guess I would believe that everybody would love it if they give it a try, if they are right. patient enough to, you know, to understand it enough to decide whether they like it or not. And for sure they would like it more than any other kind of, any, any other kind of ex- exercise, you know, but as I said, like some people, they are not even willing to listen. Yeah, I, true. So that is that is really that's a lot of wisdom right there. Seriously, that you just dropped. That you may not like something the first time you try it, but you stick to it, and then you'll see if you like it. And with weightlifting, with lifting weights, it seems to be almost universal that if you do it the right way and you start to build muscle, you're going to like it. There's just something like natural about using your body and using your muscles as a human being. Again, in my opinion, I'm very passionate about this, but I've seen people who did not like lifting and they've done everything. And then all of a sudden they maybe do some body weight movements that help them solve a problem in their life. Like an older person who has trouble getting off the couch and then they start squatting and now they can get off the couch and their joints don't hurt. And now they're like, Oh, now I see the value in this. And so if you're listening and you like, you think you're not going to like it, you've got to give it a shot. Like ISIS is saying and tie it to, a performance goal you have or a health goal you have or something very specific that you can then train toward, you know, don't just train to be, have a great body and a lot of muscle, like a year or two years from now, that may be too vague. Do it for the process, <laughs> do it for the, the short term wins. And so, so, so yeah, good. And I think, I also think regarding weightlifting, there is a lot of, you know, like people like in, when I was younger, when I started going to the gym, weightlifting for me was for like bodybuilders. So that's why, and a lot of people still see it like that, at least where I, from where I come from, you know, like, like lifting heavy, like women would have like these tiny little dumbbells, Mm. (laughs) the The pink dumbbells, lifting (laughs) lifting heavy weights and using all the machines that was like only if you wanted to be like Mr. Olympia, like gigantic, bulky, you know, Mm. dude in the gym. So I think a lot of people still associate weightlifting with that because not long ago and aunt she messaged me asking me what what do you think what can you tell me about intermittent fasting and i was like what for losing weight or for health in general she's like no i just want to lose some weight and i was like well i did it for a long time and actually i didn't lose any weight because of it you might or might not but it does it's not gonna make you lose weight per se but if you want i can tell you how to lose weight very easily and i kind of talk to her about it like you have to lift weights etc and she's like no i'm too old for that she's like <sighs> 45 and i'm oh, like geez. you are not too old for that <laughs> and first like actually you should start lifting weights if you want to avoid like osteoporosis or whatever you know that's the best anyone could do to avoid all these pains you start and all these health issues you start having when you grow old because of your bones bone density yep. etc so and she as i said if people are not ready to listen, I say, whenever you want, I can guide you through it. You just need to find probably a personal trainer who will like help you understand, you know, the correct form. That's all. And guide. One, <laughs> one ear out the other. Well, <laughs> yes. she's not ready. She's not ready to leave she's the call. She's not yet. ready. I was like, okay, well, you know, that's all I can do. I just plant the seed. <laughs> Plant the seed. That's true. It's true. And and that's a good point too, because some people will hear it over and over and over again. And then like two years later, they'll finally, you know, after frustration, they'll finally yeah, reach they out. Remember, oh, yeah, she told yeah. me she... Yeah. Yeah, exactly. and, and by the way, for anyone listening, there is an age at which you're too old to lift and it's the day after you die. 
that's how exactly. that's the age <laughs> that you're too old to live. And I mean that literally because recent studies have shown in your 80s and 90s you can build new tissue. I mean that is so amazing. My own mother is approaching 70 and she's lifting for the first time in her life. She loves it and she's getting stronger. That's what it's about. It's not just physique even though physique's a nice side benefit. It's about being a human. Like we're we're mechanical, right? We're me- we have yeah. these joints and skeletal muscle and if we don't use it it all just starts to waste. And you start to get frail. And just like anybody else you see walking around, your trajectory is poor health, metabolic disease, and all of that. And Isis here is like staving all of that off. She's getting younger every year of her life by lifting. So what else has it improved in your life besides, you know, the physical and mental, like relationships, career, personal goals, anything else? Well, I mean, already the emotional part of it um, and the physical part of it is like a lot. I I don't know. I mean, no, no, I don't. I don't. I, I mean, emotionally, it has improved a lot. As I said, when I in this period in which I was like a little bit too down, like working out made me feel like myself again. Mm-hmm. That's already a huge improvement. Yeah, I yeah. realized that exercise and. It's not just exercise just because I exercise, because I have, if I had done some heat or some cardio or whatever, I would have felt like, I wouldn't have felt the same. I would have felt like, you know, like, yeah. like, I'm tired. <laughs> just tired and but, exhausted. Yeah, yeah not, not empowered. Yeah, it makes me feel empowered. And that's, uh, I would say that uh, affects indirectly every single aspect in my life, for sure. Beautiful. Yeah, no, that and we hear that a lot of of the confidence you get. Sometimes it sometimes it feeds into other areas where maybe you you make a decision you would have made otherwise or take take a, you know, um work on personal development or make, you know, you speak up at work or, or something. Sometimes people have a very specific thing they tie it to with confidence. You're already a very confident person, it seems. I, I suspect a lot of that is inherent in you as well for, over the years. But the fact that you've found yourself and you've kind of got past the emotional side of it and now it's you're more positive, I can just see it on your face and how you talk. And I think that alone is, you're going to inspire a lot of people just in general by your interactions with them. It sounds like already you're doing that as well as being on the show. Um, I don't want to give the show too much credit, but like, seriously, you're going to, you're going to inspire a lot of people because it's just, just so positive. That's my hope. Yeah. That's my that hope. Is, I, for hate, sure. I hate to hear people struggling with, you know, their weight issues. Every time, as I say, every time I talk with my college friends, they're always, you know, like telling me how hard it is, why they cannot lose weight. And they mm. are like doing everything and they're eating. They tell me what they eat. I'm like, oh my God, you just need to eat more. <laughs> You know what? You're going to share this episode with them, right? All your friends, yes, sure, everyone you know, like, sure, hey, look at me. Sure. I'm on this. Fam- I'm famous. I'm on this show now. You know, millions <laughs> of uh, downloads and uh, <laughs> share it with them. And then maybe they'll get the message and they'll they'll laugh because I'm saying we're saying all these things about them. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then again, this is our religion. <laughs> They're probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you they, go. they are part of another faith. They're going to be like that. <laughs> Yeah, maybe, maybe you never know. You might be surprised. You never um, know. No, might for be surprised. Sure, like, We're gonna give them the benefit sure, of the yeah. doubt when they're watching this. Exactly. No, for sure. I think a lot of people, you know, like it just take time. You know, it takes time for some people to, yeah, like get the message and be ready. You know, for sure. So tying this all together for listeners who might be where you once were, right? If they're feeling stuck in the unhealthy patterns, maybe it's your friends who are listening to this, <laughs> but anybody who's listening, what either what practical advice do you want to give them like one or two simple tips to start their own journey or thought of another way? What would you have told yourself, you know, like 15 years ago to, to kind of jumpstart this, knowing that there's the mental piece that you have to get past, the, the this religion of like bias yeah. you have to get past? What, what would you say? Well, I would say that Definitely, like things are simpler than what you think they should be, and consistency and sustainability is the main my magic ingredients in this part of my journey. Like being consistent, because I don't see it anymore as an end goal to lose this amount of kilos. So it means that it's just my life journey. So. Of course, you have to be consistent. It's okay to like fall off the wagon once in a while. It's okay, even if it's twice in a week, whatever. It's just keep on the journey. Just keep walking this path and period. And sustainability helps with consistency because the more sustainable you, you do, like you have to create your own process. Like 
for example, I was trying to balance when I was having like my my once a week meal out. I was trying to balance my calories of the day to be able to fit that 1000 calorie burger. And then I realized <laughs> that I was putting too much stress in my mind. And, you know, I was feeling hungry or whatever. And I say, OK, I'm just going to eat enough. And if this day I eat more calories, who cares? You know, it's more sustainable for me to do it this way than to like do it the other way, which is sacrificing my other two meals to mm -hmm. be able to feed us uh, that delicious burger that I like to have once a week. So it's all, you know, you have to make it sustainable for you and that will help you be consistent. So true. So true. I mean, you, you've, you got it. You've got it. Like you, you figured it out. I just like, just if you can plan your day, your week, your training, your food, your movement, all that in a way that you can do it or, or that it fits your life, of course, then you can be consistent. Yeah. Some people have it backward. They like try to force in the consistency with some discipline or willpower uh, with things that they don't yeah. like. Right. Yeah, and you're saying, yeah. well, if you like it and it's the process and it's giving you wins every day, you'll just do it. <laughs> it's just part exactly. of your life. You, can, yeah. you can't rely on willpower. This is something yeah. I have learned the hard way. You can't rely on willpower because it's, a, it's not an infinite resource. Yeah. And food is always available. I mean, like if we're talking, if you have issues with food, willpower on alone is not going to get you anywhere because food is always there. Exactly. You know? The temptation's always so, there. So why, exactly. why try not to like, make it up? Yeah. Yeah. It's not something like alcohol or cigarettes that you can just like make disappear from your life completely. So mm -hmm. yeah, willpower is not going to help. That's great. You have to just do create a system that works for you in a sustainable way, a system that's that it's enjoyable, that doesn't feel like a sacrifice. And now with the right information, I have realized that this system exists for me. It's not a sacrifice. I eat as much as I want. I eat everything that I want, you know, in moderation, of course, I plan it out, etc. And it works very well for me. And it doesn't feel, it doesn't have to feel difficult. That's my main, like if it feels difficult, that's a red flag. You have to find a different way. I love it. A system, a system that's sustainable, enjoyable, doesn't feel like a sacrifice. And that is hundred percent possible for everyone listening. So I want to know, Isis, what is next in your life? What, besides this amazing conversation we had, and of course you're going to share this with all your friends who are going to get, you know, uh, converted out of that religion into, you know, this sustainable way of life. What are your future goals for your fitness, your health, and, and this, this spreading awareness that you seem to be really good at doing here? <laughs> well, my, my, Biggest goal right now is to completely heal my relationship with food, to yeah. not feel guilty for, like, not feel any kind of uh, feeling of guilt or, or self-defeat or not being enough because of the way I eat. I want to feel that freedom that, you know, I can eat whatever I want, not literally. But actually, I like to eat healthy. I just want to break free from that mental chaos, which is now almost zero, but it's mm -hmm. still there. I mean, my subconscious mind still like, you know, whenever, you know, I eat uh, extra calories, it's like tomorrow we will eat those calories less. And then mm -hmm. I'm like, no, that, I already seen that doesn't work for me. And, you know, you know, like just heal completely my relationship with food. I am very confident that in the physical aspect of it, on the right track, and there's no way back. I'm looking forward to my first uh, cycle, full cycle of uh, gaining and then gaining. starting uh, to see how it looks. <laughs> but uh, yeah, mainly my main okay. goal now is focusing on the emotional side of it because everything else, it's already, it feels, it fits perfectly. I... I already, you know, like feel well with what I eat, etc. It's just the mental side of it that it's still, it's still there. It takes time because it's your subconscious mind, you know, since I was a child, feeling guilty for what I ate, feeling that I had to eat less, you know, like sometimes mm -hmm. I'm thinking like maybe I could just go back into the cut, you know, like just, just, just your totally mindset, yeah. your old mindset telling you like, what are you doing? You're eating too much. <laughs> That's right. I mean, and it sounds like you've come so far and you're right. You know, we're always going to have things that we 
struggle with or things from our past. And you, you put it nicely when you said subconscious, and I would even say unconscious in some cases, mm -hmm. uh, pattern, like they're patterns, right? They're patterns that are just like wow. trained into you. And if it started when you were 10, that's even you know, harder to, to break because it goes so far back. But since you said that, it reminds me, we, you know, in, in the Wits and Weights community, you know, I would love to have more uh, em content about emotion and, and self-sabotage and like, um, you know, unconscious patterns and things like that as part of our, you know, information and maybe some future podcast episodes about that. So I'd love your input on that as we go forward. I do like to ask this question of all guests and I think you know what's coming, but what one question did you wish I had asked and what is your answer? Okay. Yeah. I had to think about it for days on end. So my <laughs> so you thought about it in advance and it was hard, right? Okay. Of course, it was like what I don't know. So it's uh, what's the most difficult part of this new journey? Okay, good, good question. What, what's your yeah. answer? Yeah. And the answer is the the emotional part of it, the transitioning from the old mentality that I have to do more, sacrifice more, eat less, etc., to this new mentality of things have to be simple and easy because it's kind of like it's like counterintuitive you know it's like it's like when you are you are afraid of heights and you you're gonna jump even if you tell your mind i'm safe it's safe to jump let's do it your subconscious mind like keeps you there like mm -hmm. frozen, frozen. <laughs> you know? yeah. like i can't i can't so it's kind of like facing that right now like almost on like very frequent that you have to realize that, you know, like you have this internal battle, like this is too good to be true. This is too easy. What, you know, like, is it going to work? How is this going to work? Like I have done things much more difficult. If they haven't worked. Why is this going to work? So that is my only actual challenge right now with this new way of doing things because everything else is much easier than what I always done. So. Yeah. So the emotional shift in all of your beliefs <laughs> is, awesome. is difficult. Yeah. 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 Even though you are changing from a mindset in which things have to be super hard and you're changing to something easier, it's still difficult for your brain because your brain gets kind of like hooked to that mentality, addicted right. to that idea, to that level of difficulty. So when you don't have it, your brain is like, Hey, what's going on? <laughs> Because it thinks something bad is going to happen, right? It thinks exactly. it thinks that that decision. So, so why don't we just why don't we make everybody feel a little bit more uh, easy about or re relieved about this? What is the worst that can happen if you make a quote unquote wrong decision, like with your food or your training? What's the worst that's going to happen? Like that, Nothing. maybe it's hypothetical, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, right? What well, it's probably I mean, no worse than what's happened in the past when you haven't been exactly. doing the right things. That's so. what I have. Actually, I had this thought not not long ago, like, what's the worst that can happen? I'm going to put on weight. Well, I've been putting on weight all of my life. Exactly. Like yeah. The story of my life is nothing new. So, yeah, yeah you're right. What's the worst yeah. that can happen? It's nothing new, yeah. actually. It's something you've been going through all your life. <laughs> exactly. And, and the way we do things and the way ISIS does things, and I know we didn't get into a lot of detail on that, but it's the awareness and the control comes from the tracking and monitoring of what you're trying to measure. Like ISIS, you know, tracks your food and tracks your lifts and stuff. And it's not quote unquote calorie counting or like this very, you know, it has to be exactly this thing. It's more just, Hey, what's going on with my choices with my body and with the outcome so that I can feed that back and change what's happening. And if you have that awareness, you know, if things are going off in the path you don't want and you can just correct yeah. it the way you do. Yeah. Yes, cool. exactly. It's, it's, it's not about perfection. It's about exactly. being con constant. That's consistent. It. Yep. Consistent. Sustainability and consistency. Yes. Awesome. Exactly. All right. Is Isis, do we want to let anybody know uh, how to reach you here or do you want them to find you in the community? Well, I'm on the community. I don't really have like a public uh, social media mm -hmm. persona. So it's just personal cool. for friends and all. But uh, I'm, happy, uh, I'm happy to interact with people on, on the Facebook community. <laughs> Beautiful. So for everyone listening, we're talking about the Wits and Weights Facebook group. Totally free. It's a private group, but it's free. And as I mentioned before, very positive, very supportive. And you can join using the link in our show notes and, or just searching Wits and Weights on Facebook and you'll be able to find Isis Alvarado in there. I'll see if I can like link. I don't think I can link to her profile, but we'll link to the group so you can find her. Other than that, this has been a pleasure, uh, an amazing conversation. I'm really glad we had you on. I'm inspired just talking to you. You're so positive. And again, I'm grateful you came on, Isis. Thank you. I really enjoyed this conversation too. And as I said, thank you for everything you share. 
like this information has changed my life and not only the scientific facts that you share, but also your approach to it. That, as I said, it has sunk in my mind and it has been like, it has been a key factor for the changes that I needed to, to do. That means a lot to me. I just thank you. And um, thanks for coming on. Thank you, Philip. Nice to meet you in person. Well, virtually in person. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's awesome. Okay. Okay.